Hey guys, an explanation video today. I often see people asking why 24 volt addressable LED strip isn't addressable per single LED, but per six and 12 volt per three, or why 12 volt bullet pixels use more power than five volt, for instance. Well, there's all technical reasons for that. So let's dive into that today and see how that actually works. First off, let's discuss why 24 volt is preferable by 5 volt on an LED strip, which is still the most known and used addressable LED strip voltage. The issue has to do with amps, and in turn the total amount of power we can get through a piece of copper. LED strips we all know and love are made up of thin copper sheets that stretch for long lengths to transport our power and data signals. But because this copper is so thin, it has a lot of resistance against this flow of power. The more you try to push through this thin sheet of copper, the more the resistance starts to count and basically starts transforming the power you try to push into it into heat. But the more common artifact you see from this is generally referred to as voltage drop. Because let's say you have a five volt strip and you're trying to push four amps or it's trying to draw four amps and at the end of the strip you're only measuring three and a half volts left this is the effect that is often easily seen and can easily be measured and is a direct result of the resistance in the copper of the led strip or in a wire for that matter in reality it's actually the copper getting saturated because of the amps flowing through it the amount of copper that is in there can only transport so much, and this is where the commonly known voltage injection comes from. Since we need to add separate copper paths to transport the power into different spots on the strip. I like to call this power injection because that's what you're actually doing, but I get people call it voltage injection because they just see the voltage getting too low and thus they want to raise it back up to the proper levels. But what you're actually doing is lowering resistance by providing additional pass with less resistance and thus enabling an easier flow of power. Basically, you're allowing more amps to make it to the right spots with less resistance, which results in a higher voltage. Side note, can't you just then raise the voltage? Why can't I just set my power supply to seven volts? Well, no. No, you can't do this because if you measure the LED strip at the load you intend to run it at and tune it to be a perfect five volt in that scenario, as soon as that scenario or this load changes, the voltage will also fluctuate. And if suddenly a pattern of LEDs hit that are almost off, it could potentially shoot up to the full seven volt you're putting into that strip, killing all the LED diodes and controller chips as a result. So let's say something consumes four amps and we push this into the strip with five volt. This means in total we have five volt times four amps is 20 watts of power available. Now we change the voltage to 24 volt and keep our four amps. If we do the same math, so 24 volt times four amps, that is now 96 watts of power available. That's over four times as much while pushing the same amount of amps and as I just explained, the amount of copper on the LED strip limits the amount of amps that we can flow from a single injection point. So a higher voltage allows you to deliver more power, giving the same amount of copper being used. Great. This means we can either transport more power over the same wire, or we can use smaller diameter wires, so smaller conductors, to transport the same amount of power and save money that way. Now, while both of that is true, it does have some caveats, and that's the voltage of our intended target. In this case, LED diodes, and what voltage they operate at. So let's dive into that next. LED diodes, the type of diode that brings us modern lighting basically, has its own native voltage they want to run at. This voltage actually even varies per color of the diode. Generally, this is between two volt to five volt though. 
This means that if you want to run a LED strip with lots of diodes or st a string at a higher voltage, such as 24 volts for instance, this needs to be brought down to a value the light emitting diodes or LEDs can use. This can be done in several ways, but I want to highlight the two that are most commonly used. The first method is the easiest way of dropping voltage, and that's by basically burning it off. You burn off the excess voltage with, for instance, a resistor or linear regulator. A good example of this are the 12 volt WS2811 pixels lots of people use. These can actually be bought with a dropping resistor or a dropping LDO inside. Although both of these work great, it's a very energy inefficient way of doing this since you are literally converting power into heat to drop the voltage. If we do a quick calculation, let's say you have 12 volt coming in and we want to run a 0.3 watt LED. 0.3 watt at 5 volt is 60 milliamps. Dropping 12 volt to 5 volt means a 7 volt drop. With some math we can calculate we need to burn off 0.42 watts or 84 milliamps to run this 60 milliamp or 0.3 watt LED at 100% output. That means more power is actually being wasted and burned off as heat versus what is actually used to power the LED itself. Now you can say, Poh, that's not too much of a problem, Is it's not that much. Well, look at it another way. A string of 105 volt WS2811 pixels will use a maximum of 30 watts, while a 100 times 12 volt WS2811 pixel string will use 67 watt for the exact same number of light output. So double the power for no additional light output. This is of course quite wasteful, but it still has beneficial properties in other areas such as cabling. 30 watts divided by 5 volt is 6 amps, while 67 watts divided by 12 volt is only 5.5 amps, so the amount of amps used is actually a bit lower. But it has other advantages. Because of the higher voltage, if we can tolerate a voltage drop of about 10%, for 5 volt this is only 0.5 volt, while for 12 volt this is 1.2 volt, so we have a wider margin there. Lastly, especially if you're using regulated pixels, so if a linear regulator inside of them, it doesn't matter too much to these pixels if the incoming voltage is exactly 12 volt or maybe slightly less, such as 10 volt, since the regulator is dropping it down to 5 volt anyway, the light output will remain constant and it will actually just become less hot. This, however, does not remain true for resistor-based pixels since they have a fixed amount of drop because of only having a single resistor value. So less high input voltage also means less bright LED. You can take a look at all of these numbers in my real-world LED power usage sheets and compare them yourself. Since all of those numbers are in watts, you can easily compare between 5 volt, 12 volt, and 24 volt and see which type of LED or pixel is best suited for your project. Let's do a side note again. If all I just mentioned is true, then why don't we have 24 volt or even 48 volt pixels? Well, everything has its limits. Currently, the pixel needs to deal with at least 0.42 watt of heat, plus whatever the LED diodes doesn't, don't use 100% efficiently as light output. But let's say it's 0 0.42 watt. If we now calculate the same for 24 volt, we're looking at 1.14 watt of heat that needs to be dissipated somewhere. That's just too much to deal with and would significantly lower the life expectancy of the pixel since it'll run very hot all of the time if it even works at all. Right, right. Anyway, back to 24 volt LED strips. Another way of dropping voltage is by running multiple LED diodes in series. Combined, they can take the total voltage and because they are in series, they act as a single entity and divide the voltage over them to still work. This method isn't as wasteful as burning it off and let's say it's basically 99% efficient. So that's a much better way of doing things, 
but it comes with the downside that the diodes in series basically always need to do the same exact thing, otherwise it won't work. And this is exactly where the per three for 12 volt strip and per six for 24 volt addressable strip comes from. It's the cheapest way, but also the most efficient way of dropping the voltage down for the LED diodes to use. Some improvements have been happening though. I recently did a video on 5 volt Cobb LED strip, which can have an insane amount of up to 332 LEDs a meter on a strip. But using this same style Cobb technique, we now also have 24 volt 720 LEDs per meter addressable Cobb strip that runs at 24 volt. It still needs to drop voltage, of course, and it does this by doing so serially over the LED di diodes of the same color in that segment. So where on a 50-50 package based LED strip, it would like like this with 5 volt versus 12 volt versus 24 volt LEDs. Because the Cobb LED diodes are much smaller with the 720 LEDs meter version, which I call addressable neon, they've managed to shrink these zones down to five centimeter a piece. In each zone, there are 12 diodes of each color in series, making 36 in total since it's RGB. With those five centimeter zones, so 20 zones per meter, it's only just shy of the 30 LEDs meter we've had for a long time now, but it has a very different look. And I think they are a great compromise since they are 24 volt and basically look well, very smooth and automatically diffused on the strip itself. So that basically covers everything for the normal LED pixels and strips we use, I think. Hopefully you now understand better why we don't have single addressable 24 volt strips. Wait until the end of this video. <laughs> and the compromises that need to be made to make 12 volt or 24 volt work. You can either have high density and high resolution, but at low voltage, which are great for shorter projects and where you can, where you need that resolution, or you can have low resolution strips because of the zones being bigger, etc., at much higher voltage, which in turn are great for longer length projects. Now, as you've gathered, all of these strips and methods are compromises of sorts, and these can actually be configured differently if desired. One example is actually on the back of my wall here. Those are 12 volt WS2815 144 LEDs per meter strip, which are still individually addressable while being 12 volt. They work slightly different than the 12 volt WS2811 pixels though, and have all the hardware to achieve this inside instead of relying on external components to do so. Downside, power efficiency. Normally a five volt LED uses most power when set to 100% RGB white. And if you set it to 100% red, for instance, it'll basically use about one third of that power. WS2815, however, will use the maximum amount of power in both scenarios. It needs to drop the voltage somehow and needs three diodes to do so because of the incoming 12 volt. The easiest way to explain how it does this is that it has to blind diodes inside of it so that if you're only running red, it runs the same amount of power through two blind non-light emitting diodes and thus achieves the needed voltage drop. And hence also the low power efficiency you can also see in the real world power sheet numbers. In reality, I believe it uses a little bit more complex constant current driver to do so, but that's a bit too much to explain in this video. But I have prepared two examples of other I call specialty strips. The first is a 24 volt SK6812 RGB, so no RGBW, based strip, but it's single addressable while being 24 volt instead of per six, like I explained in the beginning. But what? What? You said that was impossible. Well, yes it is, unless you do it very differently. Remember those compromises you could reconfigure? This strip is basically wired very differently and always uses the maximum amount of power. So it doesn't matter if the strip is off, displaying 50% or 100% red, or even 100% RGB white, it always uses 52 watts of power, always. 
That makes it the most horribly efficient LED strip in existence, but at the same time, it's a cheap way of doing single addressable on a 24 volt LED strip. So depending on your use case, that might actually be acceptable or not. If you wanna do a 10 meter strip and need single addressable, but can do any power injections in whatever way, hey, that'll work. But um, better turn these off when they're not in use since otherwise they'll use 52 watts of power 24 seven. <laughs> and then I have a second specialty strip and that is using a method we haven't highlighted yet. And that's using a buck converter to convert the power on strip from 12 volt to five volt. Buck converters are much more efficient than just dropping the voltage and can remain 80% to 90% efficient while doing so. The strip has extra traces on there. So we have 12 volt running over the whole strip, but then an individual buck converter from 12 volt to five volt for each 50 centimeter section. Downsides, you can only cut it per 50 centimeter section. And well, price, integrating buck converters onto the strip itself isn't cheap. Also, the strip basically needs to be an IP67 sleeve since converters are on the back side of the strip. Another way of achieving the same principle though is using external buck converters. And I've done a complete series and article about that previously. I believe it can be a great setup to run if you want single addressable five volt strip, but want to use 24 volt as the transportation voltage to lower the diameter or conductor size of the wires you need. The downside of that is mostly that you need to be able to have the buck converter and wiring at the end point, so near the LED strip, which isn't always possible. Price-wise, it's actually not too bad since the price of the buck converters is often offset by needing much, much less copper in your power distribution lines. Well, that was a bit longer than I, I intended it to be, but hopefully this technical deep dive gives you a bit more insight why certain things are as they are, and that certain magical LED strip configurations with say 48 volt and 300 addressable LEDs per meter individually aren't really technically possible right now. As technology improves, however, new methods will become viable. I believe the new 720 LEDs per meter cob addressable neon are an example of that, for instance. As always, everything discussed on this video will be linked in the video description. And I hope to see you back in another video. Thanks for watching and see you then. Bye bye.